spoke a little bit about flood risk, so yes. now I'm going to talk about heat risk. Yes. Um, so we know in Kent that we are going to experience warmer, wetter winters and hotter, drier summers. Um, and one of our top priority risks is actually around increasing temperatures and how they're yes. going to impact um, our communities and environment. So with the other side of this scheme, um, we've actually done a tree planting and um, kind of sub scheme in the two road uh, adjacent to the park. Yes. So we've planted 31 trees across the two roads and they're a mixture of maple and maidenhair trees and we've also installed 11 sustainable urban drainage tree pits and um, which help to alleviate flood risk in that area. So the point um, of kind of planting the trees is that when they mature to full size they'll increase canopy cover in the streets, provide shade and also increased evapotranspiration of water from the tree leaves will help to cool the air temperature further um, on hot days. So in terms of who actually benefits from the work we've done in those streets, there's a primary um, and nursery school just at the top of those yeah. roads and there's obviously quite a lot of houses here so you can imagine at school times at pick up and drop offs yeah. it gets very very busy here. So I think when the trees have matured to full size that's when the true impact of what we've done um, in terms of the tree planting for heat stress will actually be realised into the future. Um, before I pass over to Shane, the last thing I wanted to mention was the sort of joint working aspect of this project. Um, it's been really, really important for us at KCC to work bilaterally and internally with a range of different teams and also externally. It's really helped us develop a project that's kind of really multifunctional, you know, it delivers flood risk alleviation, it also reduces heat stress while improving biodiversity and improving spaces for visitors and residents, residents really. So I think it's a great case study um, in terms of how when we work together on projects to deliver climate change adaptation, we really do achieve um, wider benefits for Kent. Really. So, I'm just going to pass over to Shane now. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you very much, Fred. No, it's been a real pleasure to work with uh, across so many different disciplines and professions on this project. Um, so, I, I'm from Green Blue Urban. Um, we're a company who have been working to provide healthy urban spaces in harmony with nature for more than 30 years now. So we. Um, at Green Blue Urban, we do, we do this through innovation and manufacture, design of urban tree pit systems from both recycled and recyclable materials right here in the UK. Um, and the, the outcome of all of these things is to help trees to survive and thrive in the urban environment. Um, I, think, I think we may have had some dealings previously in Ipswich way back. <laughs> um, so yes, we, on this project, as Freya has been saying, 11 tree pits installed and these tree pits provide quite a range of benefits. So as the 11 tree pits capture water from the surrounding hard surfaces, more than 38,000 litres just within the 11 tree pits themselves, captured, released into the groundwater, removed from the surface water system altogether, and also the associated pollutants. So it's a very effective on the ground solution discharging the water into groundwater. Um, it's also um, helping to reduce temperatures. So if we've got healthy, thriving, vibrant, actively growing canopies, that reduces the, um, the temperatures, can reduce temperatures in the immediate area by as much as six degrees. So it's, it's, it's impressive what a tree can achieve. As the urban temperature is roughly speaking four degrees more than the open countryside, it's, a, it's very important it's a, to do. Absolutely. Yes. We're not going to have the district council complaining about the trees. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But not careful. There's, there's some people don't like trees because they they cause the problems that you have occasionally to prune them once you've grown them. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's one of the very key things that we focus on is is maintenance free trees. Yeah. So getting the right tree in the right place, making sure that it's maintenance free and that, that the system below ground provides so the tree can reach full maturity. And who is advising on making sure that the trees that you grow are ones which are not going to be subject to climate change? That was, um, there was a palette specifically drawn up by Cool Towns, wasn't there? I believe that addressed that. We've had advice from different partners in the Cool Towns project, which is actually yes. the project that's funded yes. um, that scheme. Uh, we also work with WSP as well and yes. some of their tree specialists. Um, yes. But yeah. when we were picking the trees, it's, it can be quite a difficult situation with a lot of people involved. So we had to take into account overhead lines. So we had yes, to get trees that could fit under the overhead yeah. lines. They also have to be suitable for planting in the highway as well. Yes. Um, and because some of them are in the tree pits, they have to be able to withstand periods of drought and water logging as well. So yes. 
Yeah, it is. Because um, well, I'm fascinated that you know you shouldn't be planting beech. You have to plant hornbeam because hornbeam can resist the changes, whereas beech mm -hmm. not. Some of those wonderful beech avenues are going to have to be replaced. I noticed National Trust is beginning to replant uh, and to use hornbeam. Yes. I've used for, uh, once I knew that I'd be busy planting all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, tree, trees need to be drought tolerant in order to sustain a suds environment yes. in any case. Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. Very good. Yes, very good. And there's a testing, there's a te testing trial on Maynard Avenue as well. So we're actually testing how the trees are actively impacting on inputs and outputs of water.